You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Thanks be to God. May God bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. And today I would like to focus on faith and not the faith that takes possession of God's promises only. For instance, the blind man said, if you want, the leper said, you can purify, and Jesus said, I will. So it was an action of faith. The blind told Jesus, Jesus, have compassion on me. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do? And I want to see, he said. So Jesus added, do you believe that I can do that? And the blind said, yes. So then be as your faith. In the same moment, the, the blind was healed. So this is one kind of faith. Faith that takes possession of, of a need that is needed. But there is the faith that is the faith which is most important than the one to conquer possessions, which is the faith to build a relationship with God. For example, to get married, you take an, an action of faith and marry. We like each other, we love each other, and marry. So that's faith in that moment. But it is not only to marry. You also need to maintain your faith in order to maintain the marriage. So you got married by faith. So now you're going to have to maintain faith in order to maintain the marriage. And this is what we want to talk about faith. The faith that conquers and the faith that maintains what was conquered. And this is so important in the life of those who want to save their soul. Because it's not only a matter to believe alone to receive a blessing, but you need to maintain this blessing. Jesus healed ten leprous men. Only one of them returned. So the ten were healed, the ten showed faith, they were healed, but only one returned and to thank him and follow him. So only one maintained his faith unshakable. So, my dear listener, because of this lack of understanding the constant faith, the perseverance of faith, many people give up in faith. Many people lose hope in faith. They conquer a lot of possessions, great things, but not always they maintain their possessions because they abandon this faith. And that is very sad. This is very terrible. It is, is actually worse than not to have conquered the blessing. So Jesus, he teaches us to maintain our faith. Jesus, he makes possible with his word to teach for us to maintain that faith, that constance, that perseverance, endurance. Because faith is not an emotion. Faith is not something that you feel or sense. Faith has everything to do with intelligence, with reason. We don't only believe to conquer salvation, but we also need to maintain our faith to maintain our salvation. Let us see one of the parables, one of the greatest parables that the Lord Jesus he, he taught us about the lost coin. He says, he says, Oh, what a woman having ten silver coins, having ten silver coins, these coins was the, 
was the, the salary, was the payment of our days of work. So having 10 coins, if she loses one coin, does not light up, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully, search carefully with perseverance until she finds it. So she searches carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Well, Jesus here, adding to this parable, he says, Likewise, I say to you that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Sometimes a person, sometimes a person is inside of a denomination, inside of a church, inside of a religion, but they are lost, like a, a lost coin. They are among, they are among the multitude, but just fulfilling a religious obligation. But their life is a living hell, and no one does nothing for them. They are like a lost coin. They are there, but they are lost. And no one sees the, the pastor, don't see the priest, don't see the rabbi or whoever, the, the leader, the spiritual leader. They do not observe the need of that person. Only, only have them as one more number among the congregation. And this happens a lot. And you know, in the case of the pastor, I'm speaking now about the pastors, you know, Jesus here is referring to the leaders that take care of the sheep, that teaches, that guides, that puts all of himself to understand, to make the person understand and to obey it, and to obey it. Because if that person learns the word of God, but does not obey, they will be lost inside of the church. You know that this silver coin is... It was something that you shouldn't lose. You don't lose it like that or by itself. Like the case, the parable of the lost sheep. The lost sheep deviated from the other from the other sheep. The lost son, he wanted to leave the house. He, cho he chose to leave, to leave the father's house and his brothers and go, and go about. But we have this kind of cases inside of the churches, denomination, people that are lost, people that are lost because they want to lose, they don't want to stay in the church. Others, they, they lose themselves because they don't have instructions, they don't have direction in the word of perseverance, not to be instructed in the word of trusting God, to believe in God's word, in God's promise. So then these people, they lose their way and it becomes hard and difficult to reach salvation simply because of these problems. For the devil, he cannot touch in a person that is of God. But the person that is of God, even though, even though being of God, they, it can be in their mind or reach in their mind and to live for an apparent reason. They are inside of their house, for instance. They are protected at home by faith, by God's kingdom. But the devil... He shakes their life on the outside, showing to them things of this world, and then a person can become enthusiastic about what's going on around, about what is happening, about the song that is playing, or the environment that is coming about in the city, the worldly ways or feelings, emotions, and then 
a person by themselves, they decide to leave their home, to leave the kingdom of God, and then they lose their way. It's the case of the lost coin, because the, the silver coin has no legs. The owner of the silver coin did not have did not have care enough to put it in a safe place. That's why she lost. But my dear friend, faith is like this. You have to look at faith as marriage, like a marriage. How many people in this right now, they say, I got married. I got married with love and faith. But this marriage lasted only a little while because your faith was not based in a word, the word of God. Your faith was based on the feeling, on the emotion of the heart. Ah, I like this person, I liked her. Look at this guy, he's handsome. The, he is the prince, the prince charm of your life, and then you want to surrender yourself to him. Once you take him home, and then you start seeing that the, that prince charm is not as a prince as you thought, then you become sad, right? Yes or no? Or vice versa, oh, she's a princess to me. But then when you take her home, that removes the makeup, right? When she removes all the hair, and now what happens? Mm, I got betrayed. I fooled myself. So, this kind of love is the love with enthusiasm, with emotions, the, the love of the heart, the love that is vulgar, that has nothing to do with the love from the Bible. Because the, the, the love from the Bible is born through faith. And faith, faith gives origin. It begins real love, true love. So, when a woman loses the silver coin that had, that had a value of one, one salary for the day, so she, became, so she went after, searching the house, sweeping the house. So she cleaned the house, she checked the house, she you know, searched and searched until she found. And when she found it, it's only joy. And the kingdom of God is like that. Maybe, my dear listener, you who are listening to me right now, you are like this lost coin. You are lost, maybe at the universal church, or inside of the universal church, or any other church. But we are seeking. We are teaching. We are direct. And maybe you say, Ah, Bishop, but not all the pastors of the Universal Church teaches and guides like we need. It's true, you may have a point. They are immature. They just began now. I was in this phase in my ministry. But you do not lose all the days. Every day we are preaching. Every day we are in the radio or TV. We are insisting. We are doing everything. We are putting all our force on, on the literature, written books. So when you are in faith, and you, you have intelligent faith, the biblical faith, the faith that it reasons, and faith that has no feeling. So then, my dear listener, you know that the moment is hard, there is storm of problems, and life is like this. Sometimes we go through problems and difficulties, whether at home or in the family, or a problem in the, with the husband, the wife, or children, or problem at work, unemployment, and so on, and on, and on, and on. But when you are, or if you have your faith based, solidified on God's word, what, come what may, you are going to overcome. Like Jesus said, the parable, the greatest teaching that Jesus said, that the wise man, the man of faith, what did he do? He built his house upon the rock. Of course, 
when you build a house on a rock, it is hard. It is hard for you to build it in a quick way because to lay down the foundations is hard. And you have to make the holes and the base and it takes time and then you add whatever you need to add in order to build. But once you build the house upon the rock and then may come what wind, may come what rain may come, whatever comes against that house will stand firm because it's solidified. But when the house is built on the sand, then there is no security. It's not secure. The rain will come, the, the storm will come, the sea will roar, and that house will fall because that house was not built with solidity, with the faith that is pure in the obedience to God's word. Is that clear, my dear listener? So you who are listening to me right now, and perhaps you are like a lost coin, you are, and you have all, all means to sustain your faith, to feed your faith. I keep thinking about the people who are far, who are far, perhaps in the countryside of the of the country, far away from the cities, that doesn't have internet, that doesn't have TV, maybe they have a radio, old radio to tune. And these people also, also are motivated to grow in faith through our program.
because of my husband's um, infidelity. He was cheating and I didn't know what to do to stop it. So I am thinking I need to do something to him to stop it. Maybe that will let him stop. I tried to kill him. I used to get up in the night, couldn't sleep, go to the kitchen, get the knife, and to the bedroom trying to kill him with the knife. Luckily, he saw me standing over the bed with the knife. It was terrible. I also remember one night, couldn't sleep again. I went into the kitchen and I'm like, I'm gonna hot some water on the stove and um, pour it on him and burn him up. I went into the kitchen, hot the water, I came in. Luckily, all the water didn't catch him. Some catch him and he was in pain. It was awful. You know, I'm surprised he even came home knowing <laughs> that I was that sort of person who was crazy, who would try to kill him in his sleep. So I just, we decided um, enough. Then my eldest daughter started acting out and I have to be at the school all the time, talking to the teachers, the fights there, going to the police, even reporting. That was too much. So I decided this is not normal, what I'm going through. Too much pressure, too much stress. And I thought I was a strong person. But with all of those problems, it tore me down. We went to the church and um, we received counseling. We sat down, we had a good conversation that day. I remember my husband, the pastor asked, do you want to, your marriage to work? And he wanted to try. But I was like, I don't know because it's too much pain. I don't know if I can forgive him because each time it keeps replaying over and over in my head. I could not let it go. Because I was so unhappy with the situation and didn't believe that it could change. And I remember I was holding grudges, couldn't forgive my husband. And because of my unforgiveness right there, it caused even more fights. But then after coming to the church and participating in chains of prayer and counsel, then I decided, you know, I'm gonna try and see. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna work on my, my marriage with my husband. It wasn't overnight and it was not easy. Cause there were times I didn't want to. But then I stick it out and I fight and little by little I started overcoming, we started getting better. Then I decided to give my life to God. And then after giving my life to God, then my daughter did as well because because of some issues she was going on with her too. Um, she decided also to give her life to God and things started changing. Um, we started to become more happy at home. I uh, started to become a different person. I learned to forgive and move on. And then my husband seeing that after a while, 
he decided also to come to the church and um, he got baptized as well. My life now is totally different from what it was when I first started coming to the church. Someone out there going through the same thing that I did and thinking, oh, I can't forgive, I can't let it go. But you need to. That's the only way you're going to be able to be happy. Forgive, move on, and God will help you. He'll strengthen you, God. He's strengthened me. And if He can do it for me, I'm no different from nobody. We're all the same. It's just a decision, you know. Just decide to do it. And when there are going to be days when it's not going to be easy, but keep holding on and keep fighting and ask God for strength and He'll strengthen you through it. And I remember I had to even apologize to him. I said, I don't know how you put up with me. I don't know why you still wanted to stick around. <laughs> and I was so crazy, trying to kill you many times. I don't know why you stick around. And, and for that, I'm grateful. And I have to ask for his forgiveness. And he has forgiven me. Everyone who does not submit to God's word brings to themselves destruction to their life. Even though they have faith, goals, and dreams, if there is no obedience to God's word, they will certainly be rejected by God. God sees the heart and recognizes those who fear Him and keep their word. And these are the ones who want eternal life, are humbling themselves, repents from their wicked ways, and seek the throne of grace and mercy of God. The Universal Church, empowering lives with the Word of God.
your life away I want to start anew My heart I give to you Nothing can hold me back From what I choose to do I give myself to you My life is in your hands I cannot live this way Dreaming my life away I want to start Before I came to the church, I was destroyed. My stepbrother came to a point where he began to watch pornography. So of course, I became the person that he was testing on. And there became a time where I wasn't just touching anymore. Where he began to physically rape me practically every day. I would try to defend myself and he would hit me even harder. From there, I had a friend that she was close to me, but she didn't know what I was going through. She told me that cutting myself helps. And so then I began to cut myself and I did feel what she was talking about, the relief per se, but that relief is so temporary. From there came the desire to kill myself. And I tried to kill myself twice, but every time I never had the courage to actually put it through. That also began to like bring problems in the family because not only was everyone trying to deal with what happened to me, but I was also causing trouble as well. I would come home late at like five o'clock in the morning, drunk, falling up and down the stairs. I was very rebellious. My mom would tell me, hey, don't go to that party, and I'd go. And she began to notice like the bruises, the cuts and stuff. So she would ask me, you know, hey, where did that come from? And I'm like, none of your business. And as I got older, I came to learn that um, my stepbrother's mother, she had did witchcraft on her son when he came from Cape Verde to mess up our family because she still was in love with my stepfather. So um, I began to understand why I couldn't sleep at night. I would see spirits. I would try to fall asleep. It took me at least like six hours to close my eyes. My grandma, she was close to the point where she was going to die. So she came to live with us in Rhode Island. And um, she, we had a church there. So every time she would visit, she would bring me on the weekends and stuff. But when she came to live with us, she started demanding me to go more. And my grandma, she had um, made me promise two days before she died that we would continue to go to the Universal Church. When she asked us, she was like, oh, I want you guys to make Vovo a promise. And I'm like, okay, you know, what do you want? You know, at the point she was dying, I was like, whatever you want. And she was like, I want you guys to promise me that you guys are gonna keep going to Universal Church. We were like, okay, Vovo, why do, you, why do you want us to keep going there? I don't understand why it's so important to you. And she was like, because that was where I met the living God. And I really converted, it was when I made the decision to just let go, stop trying to, pretend like I'm okay, like I can do it on my own. I realized that I was, I was small, I was weak, and I needed God's help. So that's when things really began to change for me. And then my mom had her battles and everything that she was facing, you know, after my grandma died. School was like, I, I almost stayed back. I don't even, I can't even count how many classes I even failed. Drinking every weekend wasn't enough. There was nothing that was filling me. Today, I have peace. I, I no longer have negative thoughts. I no longer see spirits. I no longer suffer from anything. And now my life is, is blessed in every area. Thank God for that. I've always been a person that was independent, but now I depend on God. So it's like my life is just striving completely. Um, my spiritual life, my connection with God is, is so blessed um, to be able to have somebody that you call your best friend. Somebody you don't even see, but they're your bestest friend ever. Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart.
The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life. was a mess. Drug addiction and alcoholism. I had so many physical problems and of course the depression just just got worse. Really destroyed. I felt so desperate, so helpless. My name is Chance and this is my story. I had relationship problems. I had um, pretty much everything you can imagine. I had depression, suicidal thoughts. I also had a, you know, a relationship that lasted uh, 10 years and I thought I was going to get married. And then I got a call one day from my boyfriend stating that, oh, I'm not coming home. So, of course, that made the depression even worse. It's just when you think it couldn't get any worse, it gets worse. I had a migraine headache, and this one was so, so bad. I mean, it was pounding. So when I met my husband, it got worse. He wasn't my husband yet. He was a boyfriend. 
then I said, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? In the end, I ended up doing witchcraft. What happened then was um, it got so bad that I became so suicidal that one night I, I almost you know, took my life. I wanted to take a bunch of pills because at that point I was taking so much medication. And that was the night I was gonna commit suicide. You know, it was, a, it was a flyer, it was more than that, it was like a pamphlet and it had all these testimonies. But the, the cool thing was that I was looking at it and I'm like, wow, this is heavy duty. So I made up my mind, I said, I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna go, one last thing I'm gonna try. Gosh, I felt so good the day that I was stopped suffering from all of this. Was, it was like a whole new life, a whole new chapter for me. My husband overcame that addiction. We got married a year later and we're still married. We're going to be married 13 years next month. My advice is, you know, anything that you want out of life, you have to work for it. It's not an easy fix. You know, me, change completely, leave the past behind, all those illnesses, all the sicknesses, all the hurts, the frustration, you know, the disappointments, all that's gone. God knows what's going on, and, and He knew that once I came that I would give my 100%, you know, I would give my all. A follower waits for bread and fish. A disciple is a fisherman. A follower fights for growth. A disciple fights to reproduce. A follower surrenders part of their goods. A disciple gives up all their life. A follower loves freedom. A disciple enjoys serving and sacrifice. A follower is worth because they add. A disciple because they multiply. A follower is conditioned by circumstances. A disciple uses it to exercise their faith. A follower is valuable. A disciple is indispensable. Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. to you.